Hello everybody again. I am back. Um, my daughter and I have been having some crazy dreams, but uh, I'm not ready to share all of them just yet. But I do want to share a dream that my daughter had. Uh, I believe it was yesterday night or the night before. So uh, first off, um, I just I just want to give all glory to God. I do feel like these dreams are tests, and I'm I'm really excited. Um, just to just give a little uh, tidbit that the Lord has been speaking to me. Um, basically, I had a conversation with a fellow believer um, regarding my last dream video. And I want to say that we as Christians must get educated and we must have knowledge in this subject matter. And I feel bad because I feel like people are blind. And I just pray that people wake up in Jesus' name. We must be wise. Um, first off, I want to start with just a couple of Bible verses. Just to quote. First Bible verse is, uh, I believe it's from Proverbs, but I could be wrong. It is God's glory to conceal a matter but it is the glory of rulers to seek it out, okay? This is a very, very, this is important. The Lord loves when we ask him for knowledge. He loves when we ask him for wisdom and understanding. These things equal discernment. <laughs> and they make God proud to have rulers and leadership that has already tested their boundaries and their discernment while they have been here. Someone asked me, what did I mean by um, storing in the summer before it hits the winter? It means store up as much knowledge and as much understanding or just gathering as much scripture as you can before all hell breaks loose, literally, okay? So um, I'm gonna be talking on the topic of war it is not my favorite topic, but it's just being confirmed left and right by the Lord. So the next couple of days, I'm going to be talking about war and, uh, and what the Lord has shown me regarding wisdom. Uh, you know, in Daniel, basically, the Lord speaks to Daniel in regards to just being able to solve difficult puzzles and symbols and all these things. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get started. Tell my daughter's quick dream, and then I'm going to give you the best interpretation that I can and how this all relates to war and how the Lord also sees what I'm studying. He gives my daughter dreams and then gives me more puzzle pieces to add to the overall picture. Um, so basically, my daughter said that she had a dream that two children were feeding a tree seeds. Then she said that a huge butterfly came and ate all of the seeds that the children fed the tree. And she said that her and another child ran because the butterfly was scary and huge is what she said. So she emphasized how big and scary the, the butterfly was. And then she also emphasized how the two children that were feeding the seeds to the tree were not scared at all of the butterfly. Now, this dream is very deep, layered, symbolic, and paralleled in meaning. Uh, upon my research. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there, the rabbit hole that I went through in this research. This was a pretty hard one. And her last dream was also very hard. So that's why I'm having a hard time kind of figuring it out. I need to pray. Um, but if you guys have anything to add to this, please let me know. So basically, in this rabbit hole, I decided to do a search on what does butterfly mean in the Bible? Uh, so I went ahead and I filtered the Bible to see how many times the word butterfly was used. 
And quite naturally, butterfly was not used in the Bible at all. So quite naturally, I thought moth. I did ask her, was it day or night? She said daytime. I thought that that was going to help me regarding if it was a butterfly or a moth because she couldn't remember the color of the butterfly. She said it was daytime. So I went ahead and prior to this, I did a search on moth. Didn't like the Bible verses that popped up. They were terrible. They had to do with war, uh, thievery, and devouring. As far as like devouring garments and treasures. So that sounded very dangerous, okay? We are God's treasures. That's bad. That is bad. So um, I went ahead and I wanted to see what do... I went ahead and I wanted to see what is the difference between a moth and a butterfly. And really, there is no difference because apparently I thought that um, moths were nocturnal and they are, but so can some butterflies. And I mean, it's it's really ridiculous. Some moths are actually colorful. Really, the only difference is that one of them is thicker uh, and hairier. And really, they fall under the same category, so they're the same. <laughs> so that that goes for the species. They're they're the same species. Um, and then basically, this rabbit hole really started when I looked up uh, what do Christians believe that butterflies are. So basically. It stems from rebirth, which makes sense. But there's really only two Bible verses that they get this from, and it doesn't necessarily pertain to a butterfly. So I had to go deep search. (laughs) Deep search, Kayla. Because I'm obsessive and I needed to figure it out. So I went ahead and I went on YouTube to figure out some things maybe regarding the nature of the butterfly. And I saw something very disturbing. One of the things that I saw was some of the most disgusting things that butterflies eat. And a few of these things were feces, blood, and sweat and tears. So I was so disgusted um, that I knew there was something more sinister behind this. So... I thought correctly because when I did a search on butterflies in the Bible, I saw so much demonic stuff pop up on YouTube regarding witches and spirit animals and souls. And apparently in Asian culture, it's a superstition that uh, moths harbor and butterflies harbor uh, the spirits or the souls of dead people, okay? So basically, I ended up going on Google search because I did not want any part of that. Uh, And same thing, all these pagan, very ancient belief systems popped up regarding souls and phantom, well, etymologically, uh, ghosts is one of the words that they were using, uh, is actually phantom, which is actually darkness. So that's negative. So I knew that there was some truth to this, but uh, I wanted to know what, you know, what does God believe in this? So I know that obviously some type of darkness is coming based off of this. So I went ahead and um, God brought me finally <laughs> to uh, what does... I, oh, yeah, did a search on butterfly. Quite naturally, apparently butterfly is not like a real word. So uh, you have your conspiracies regarding, um, you know, that it means mind control and all these things, which I absolutely believe. But finally, God brings me to what does butterfly mean in Greek? Which I know that the New Testament is written in Greek. So I went ahead uh, did that, uh, clicked on that or whatever. And basically psyche is the word for soul in Greek. 
So I went ahead and I double checked this in my Blue Letter Bible. And sure enough, ding, 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 right there, psyche means soul. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all these pictures after, so please stay tuned to, to see um, all the proof. So basically, um, psyche meant soul in the New Testament. So when I broke that down to its furthest root, it meant psycho. And, you know, we have our understanding of that in English, which basically is the exact same thing in the Greek. The only Bible verse that popped up, uh, it was actually used as wax. And this Bible verse was, in those days, many hearts will wax cold. And quite naturally, of course, I've seen visions of riots and people eating each other and eating babies and killing each other and hurting each other and fighting over everything. I mean, it's gonna be psychotic, okay? So this is correct. Now, to go deeper into this rabbit hole, uh, I saw that obviously this is all pagan, uh, I'm not going to say it's all pagan reliefs, uh, beliefs because it's not, but I wanted to stay safe and that's why I did my etymological search. So I looked up what does the scientific word mean a butterfly and I will not dare try to pronounce these scientific words. As you know, there's a scientific word for, e for each species. So I went ahead and I looked up, there were two scientific words regarding the species. And one of them uh, had to do with horn, right? So I'm, I'm gonna have to go on a little rant here regarding my research that I have done. It's important. So there's two times that one horn has been used in the Bible, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you now, the book of Job is a prophetic book. You guys, if you're not, if you're not looking into constellations, um, then you know, it's probably not your mission, but don't bash people that the Lord has put this mission on their heart, okay? Everyone has their mission, we're one body. Paul said, you can't tell that the, e the ear that the hand is not a part of the body or any less than the body than the ear is, okay? I understand that now because there are different parts of the body and each part is the body but does its own mission, okay? We are soldiers of God, mission essential. So in the book of Job, the book of Job is all about the constellations. The book of Amos is all about the constellations. And there's many other examples. I, I'm not going all into this. But the Lord has shown me this. That's why it's so puzzling. Also, the book of Esther has a lot to do with constellations. So, the one time that it was used um, in the book of Job, it was talking about a unicorn. Now, scholars and people like to put their two cents and like to lean on their own understanding, which God says not to do, okay? There's a reason for this. The scholars claim that the unicorn is either A, a rhinoceros, B, a mythological creature, or C, a mythological creature who once lived and is now extinct. And the answer is none of the above, okay? It is a constellation that has come into existence as of this month or last month, okay? Look it up, people. I'm not kidding. It is two constellations that join together with Venus as the horn, okay? So that is the first time that it's used. And the second time that it was used was the, um, he will come as a horn of salvation. And you already know who he is. 
Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay? So this has happened. Everything's coming into alignment in the year 2020. Now, what does this have to do with war? So when I... Uh, Keras means horn. Uh, what's the point of this? It means a rising to power. Anytime that a horn is used, uh, it is a representation of power. So there's been seven horns, ten horns, four horns, but only two times has one horn been used in the Bible. So basically, keras, K-E-R-A-S, was the word, one of the words that it broke down into, which is a word that I've been studying, and I went ahead and I circled that in Blue Letter Bible, because I was just recently studying Ethiopia, which is the horn of Africa. Very interesting. All these things tie into Esther. Everything's starting to tie together. It's crazy, right? So, uh, basically... I went into that. I looked into this one book which uh, talks about how this word also breaks down into explosion. Now, I do want to go into this because the Lord has, I have a scientific mind. If you see my testimony, I love science. Science has, <laughs> science is a lie when it's in the hands of stupid men, okay? Men of this world, men who have no wisdom or understanding, uh, th that's just stupidity. And I can't be around it because they contradict themselves. Scientists claim that science is something that is either proven or disproven, and God has never been disproven. So they contradict themselves, okay? Science proves God to be absolutely 100% true every time. And um, basically, in my studies of Shiva and the deities in um, India, their deities are just representations, really, of different uh, chemical compounds and how they function together. Shiva is literally a recipe for a B-O-M-B. I don't want to say that because I don't want to get like mess, you know. <sighs> anyway, um, and I, I wanted to talk about earthquake and how that was not really translated necessarily correctly. Obviously, as of the solar eclipse or the solar uh, craziness that has transpired just within 10 hours ago, um, which I want to talk about that. I have so many interesting topics that I want to talk about. It's going to cause, obviously, catastrophic events, weather shifts of, you know, tremendous tide waves. Every, everything's going to be out of whack. Uh, temperatures. But basically, if you look up earthquake, earthquake, I'm, I want to do a video about that. But it leads to war. It means war. The butterfly means war, okay? I do love you guys. Uh, I just, I pray with all my heart and soul that if you have not accepted Jesus, if you don't, just submit to Jesus Christ. Repent. Turn. Repent means to turn from wickedness, okay? It means to stop doing evil things, and to turn to the Lord, our Savior. God bless you.
Just a tip, you should definitely look up the Club Moss Tree. It has exactly everything to do with scales. Very interesting, very ancient.